Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Kamini Wood, who is in North Carolina. How are you doing, Kamini? I am well. I'm glad to be here with you today. Yeah, and Kamini is a certified life coach and is passionate about working with people to heal their relationships with themselves. And that's what we're going to talk about today is self-compassion and the relationship with self. So um, when we, let's, let's dive straight in. I think this is probably an area where maybe, you know, a lot of people overlook at the best of times, but perhaps over the last year and a half due to the maybe in, enforced self-reflection this is something that maybe more people have had to confront and maybe don't know how to i absolutely agree with that assessment i think the the one i see it as a blessing the blessing that we have really gotten out of the whole pandemic and needing to spend a lot of time at home with family and just not being able to to engage in those activities that have kept us busy for year in and year out we've had to do a whole lot of self-reflection and realizing that maybe there is a need to work on that relationship with ourselves in order to move forward, you know, and move forward, not just in business, but also really to be engaged in our life and not just consistently be on autopilot. Or we recognize, oh, wow, the relationships in my world are not the healthiest. And it, it's because of how maybe I'm showing up in the relationship. And if I show up differently, maybe the, the relationship will be healthier or conversely, maybe it's just recognition that that relationship is not the best one for us at this given time that we're at in our lives. Yeah. And, and I mean, this is always very difficult. There's a couple of things I just wanted to pick up on there is uh, uh, number one, a lot of people are very, obviously, we say reluctant to even spend time with themselves. And we live in a world today that tries to actually make sure that you never spend any time alone with yourself mm -hmm. you've got devices you've got things going on all the time and that's it's as it's it's almost like it's counter culture if you took time out to sit and actually work with yourself or even explore your own thoughts we actually um i try to use the term selfful instead of selfish because i think so many of us think that if we take time for ourselves we're being selfish we should be showing up and giving to others or you know, it's just, um, like I said, it, we, we, we view it as a selfish act to take time for ourselves. And it, does, it doesn't mean that we're just going off and sitting in, the, in a bathtub with candles. It means literally taking five minutes for ourselves in the course of the day to just be in the moment rather than constantly on the go doing things and checking things off of our to-do list. Yeah, because um, there's, a, I think there's a quote from James Joyce in one of his books uh, that he talks about living at arm's length from yourself and that's like we're you know always either living in the future or living in the past or whatever but never existing in the present and I think that's exactly um, what you're talking about here is the ability even for five minutes to live in the present and it's and it just seems like it's so difficult for people to do that. It is I was actually just on a client call this morning and uh, she was reflecting how uh, her her homework, so to speak, over the last week before we we had spoken last week was to really check in with herself at least a couple times a day, just checking in. How do I feel and what do I need? And she said, comedy, you know, that was so difficult. I found that I would start my day at seven o'clock and before I know it, it's 530 and I haven't been able to take the time. And it's because we get so wrapped up in the goings on of you know, what we have to do next and future tripping. And if I don't do that, then this bad thing is going to happen. And we don't take those literally those five minutes to just be in the here and now and actually experience it, actually experience what's happening for us in this moment. You know, in the way that I, I really challenge my clients is to just simply say, what are your five senses experiencing in the moment? That is a great quick way to just get into the here and now versus worrying about things that have happened previously or future tripping and worrying about things that are about to happen or going to happen. And how would we deal with that? Yeah, no, I love that phrase, future tripping. Excellent. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I think part of the part of the problem is that we have uh, convinced ourselves that we are the busiest we've ever been. And I hear this all the time. People say to me, oh, I'm the busiest I've ever been. And, and I always counter that with, are you? 
or are you the most distracted you've ever been? Because if you really, if you did a, those old fashioned time and motion studies with a clipboard throughout your whole day, how much of your day are you allowing be filled up with distractions from social media, from mm -hmm. the internet, from wherever? And I think that's that's the first, the first or the starting point is to admit that you do have time. You absolutely mm -hmm. do have time. You're choosing not to use that time. Absolutely, and I love what you just said because it is, it's a choice. And it's slowing down to recognize where are we choosing to spend our time? Because I've heard it time and time again, I don't have time, I'm just so busy. And a couple things come up when you said that as, as you were speaking, there are two things that popped into mind. One is being really aware of where are we choosing to spend our time? Because it is true that we will end up spending so much time on social media or just doing things that aren't actually things that we truly are called to do. And then we say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I haven't been able to get all of my work done. Um, so that's number one. The second thing that came to mind was, you know, it's not a bad thing not to be overscheduled. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times we think if we're not overscheduled or so busy, somehow we're, we could be considered lazy. And that's just, uh, it, it's almost um, what I would like to say is just that false rule, right? Where the only way to show that you're productive is to be overscheduled or over busy. And it's, it's, can we challenge that rule and ask ourselves, am I intentionally working towards something that truly fills me up and is passion driven and purposeful? Or am I just filling my day with um, ad hoc to do's and calling myself productive because my day is filled with these random tasks? Yeah, no, it's an excellent point. And I mean, it, it is a, it is also a, it's a cultural thing in many ways as well. As you said, I mean, the, the pervasive, especially business culture here is that you should be busy nonstop all of the time. But I mean, it's like, I mean, I do some strategy. I mean, it's part of my job is strategy and stuff. And I, I can't do strategy if I'm if I don't take time out to think about it. You know, so I have to create space for it. And that's not always easy, but I have to create space for it. And I think the same applies to what we're talking about here is you have to create space to figure yourself out and to figure out where you are um, and and just the self-awareness, because I just think that's so powerful. If we if we if more people spent a little more time becoming self-aware, the world would be a better place. Absolutely, from so many different fronts, right? Because if we're more self-aware, we are showing up in an engaged way in our own lives. We're showing up more engaged with the relationships that we have, both personal and business. And then oftentimes I'm dealing with clients who want to move forward in their business, for instance, but because they lack that self-awareness or they don't understand the false beliefs that they're living into, it limits what their potential is in terms of being able to move forward in business. So just taking time out to becoming more self-aware is really that foundation that allows for the exponential growth in all areas of our life. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then that feeds into what you mentioned earlier about the relationships uh, aspect. And I think this is another area where, you know, people need to spend a little bit of time examining the relationships that surround them. And as you said, whether they are, you know, whether they're positive, uh, whether they're affirming good relationships around them or not. But even if you come, even if you see, OK, there maybe there are people in my orbit here who are not you know, positive or not helping, don't make me feel good. The first place you've got to start is asking yourself the question, why are they there? And what purpose are they filling for you? Because it starts with yourself, right? I mean, they're, they're filling some kind of purpose. Absolutely. And oftentimes, if we, if we take that step back, we'll recognize that people are mirroring back, oftentimes, how we're treating ourselves. So many times, if we are in a relationship that that's not really healthy, or they're the person doesn't respect us, we have to go within and say, well, how do I show my self-respect? Am I actually being respectful of myself? And that's what I really talk about and, and really mission-driven to help people understand that that relationship with self is truly the foundation for all these other aspects. So as you really have that solid foundation with yourself, recognize your worth, recognize you know, your unique gifts, respect yourself, really are visible to yourself, then you start showing up in a different way and the relationships that you cultivate around you start mirroring that back to you, rather than the unhealthy relationships are probably mirroring back some issue that you might have within yourself that you just need to, to become more self-aware about. And not in a judgmental way, in that compassionate way where it's recognizing, okay, this is how I have been, but what's actually true about myself and how can I now live into that truth rather than the disempowered way that I have been showing up.
Uh, and and what I always find fascinating as well is that when 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 some people go through a process like this, um, it can be a little bit scary because you may end up reducing the amount of uh, of people around you mm-hmm. and you know removing some relationships and all of that. And again, I think you know in counterculture we live in this world where it's all about more, 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 more mm-hmm. likes, more followers, more yep. friends on Facebook or whatever. Yep. But when you go through a process like this, you end up often reducing your orbit to quality quality exactly and i love that analogy that you brought up which is like the the social media right because we're thinking oh my gosh how many likes did this post get or how many comments did it get and it's not about that the number it's about the connection you know how did that post connect with somebody that you also connect with right? And we talk about this in business a lot, but it also happens in our personal lives. We think we have to get as many likes as we can on a post. It's the same concept with friendships and relationships. It's it's not about the number you have. It's about the connection, the emotional connection that you have with the people who surround you. Because truthfully, that's, and what COVID has taught us is community is important. Having that community and that support system is important. We don't just go through life alone. It's about creating a community though, that is supportive and that you can be vulnerable with when you need to, because again, part of self-compassion is recognizing that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to, to seek out support. You don't have to go it alone. Other people have experienced something similar that you might be going through and being able to ask for that support and not feel like it's a judgment on self needing support. Uh, and I love that point that you just made about not, you know, not needing to go it alone, because I do think when often when you're confronted with situations like that, people do think, well, I have to do this alone and I have to just go inside myself and go on this journey. And and when I when I emerge the other end, then, you know, maybe I'll talk to people about it. But it's very hard to do these things alone. And I but you also need to be you know careful about those who you choose to help you on these journey. Absolutely. It's not, you don't, you don't just go out there and start talking about all of your vulnerabilities to anybody who has, a, has ears and will hear you. It's about finding your support system. You know, that, that, those people that you feel safe with, because when you feel safe and are able to be vulnerable, that's where your growth will happen. It's, it's about creating, creating that space for yourself. So it's creating space, it's creating safety within yourself and then creating safety within the community that you choose to create for yourself. Yeah. And it's a, and it's a, and, and choosing wisely, obviously, but mostly, I mean, if somebody reaches out to you uh, and, 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 you know, asks you for help or just wants to talk or whatever, I mean, I, there's very few people who are going to either reject that or are going to be, you know, are not going to be positive in the response. And I think that's the thing that most people are afraid of is, uh, is, is not finding the right person or the person reacting negatively. So you choose wisely, but at the same time, I think most people, when somebody reaches out, have enough compassion in them to actually listen. Usually, right? <laughs> Usually, not, all, that not always. <laughs> no, there is, and that's why I say choose wisely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why it is so important to be able to discern, you know, who are your people? Who are the people that you feel that you can be truly authentic with and be able to explore those areas where you might, you might want to go through those, that, that growth process? Um, but I love what you're saying. It's, it is. It's about choosing wisely, but it's about choosing, right? Not, mm-hmm. not choosing to feel like you have to just go at, become a hermit, a hermit crab, so to speak. <laughs> and so when, when you work, when you work with your clients, uh, I mean, part of the, part of any issue is, right, is you can go through, through the process. It's sustaining afterwards, right? I mean, that's always in regards to whether it's in business or in life or whatever, it's always about, you know, we start lots of things and never sustain them. How do you help your clients like, you know, grow and sustain this kind of, you know, self-compassion and all of that and keeping time for yourself and making sure that you don't slip back into old habits? Well, the first thing that I do is I don't do a, um, you know, a 30 day and then you're all fixed and healed, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about creating a Band-Aid solution. This is about how do we transform? So it's not an information dump. It's not a quick fix solution. It's about giving them the time and space to actually create those new neural pathways because that's truly what we're doing. We are breaking down old patterns and habits and thought processes and creating new ones. And it's giving and providing that safe space for my clients. To, to build that over a course of, generally speaking, we work between three to six months together, more often six months. And after that, after we get to that six month place, they're really in a position where they have now created those new patterns. 
those, those ways of actually identifying when they may have been triggered. Cause let's be honest, we're human. We might make these shifts, but something will trigger us and we might feel like, Oh shoot, I might, you know, fall back into the old pattern. But what we've done through our work is being able to become aware of it because truthfully, when we're aware of something, we can accept that it's there and acknowledge it. And then we can actually choose to take aligned action to move ourselves forward. And that's truly the work that I'm doing with my clients is helping them recognize that first of all, they always have a choice in how they react to a situation and helping them see that it's about what aligned action do they choose to take so that they don't feel like I've done all this work and then I'm just going to fall back in when comedy is not around. Cause I'm not even doing it. I'm not fixing it's my mm-hmm. clients are, are choosing to make those shifts. I'm just creating that space and that container where it's safe enough to explore that, to figure out what really resonates with them and what can they really commit to, to continue to move forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the other thing that you just mentioned, that you mentioned there was the idea of, you know, the triggers. And I think this is something that is really, really important is that we all have triggers, right? And sometimes, sometimes those triggers can go all the way back to childhood or just something, you mm-hmm. know, something happened years ago or whatever that mm-hmm. seems to be done and buried, but it still derails us. And and recognizing those triggers is is so important. But it's it's also, I mean, it's quite difficult too for many people. You know, they need, often need somebody to, you know, external to say. So, but why did you react like that? Yeah, oftentimes we don't realize that something is in our subconscious. And that's a lot of the work that I do with my clients is just revealing what might be those old stories or those old old patterns or just the the reason that we we might react to a situation. It's just understanding where that's coming from. And it's not to psychoanalyze it. It's just to mm-hmm. again bring it to the awareness and then recognize, okay, but what's true now? As yourself in your current state, age, what's true for you now? And then from that place, where do we want to go? How do we become generative and move forward from here? Yeah, no, I just I was just writing that down. I love that uh, concept of what is true for you now, uh, because yeah, because I mean, there's so many things that I, I was actually here. I, I just give you just a funny one though. I mean, I was at the dentist the other week, you know, and the, a new dentist, and he was going through a dental history thing with me, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, and he said, "Well, how do you feel about?" going to the dentist and I said I hate it and I said because anytime <laughs> I walk through the door of the dentist I said it's the one place where I revert to being a child and I feel like a, I feel like a naughty child when I come in here and I'm going to get lectured and all of this kind of stuff yep. and he was just laughing but it's but we carry a lot of these things around with us yeah, I love that story because that actually was me just a couple of weeks ago and I was very <laughs> proud of myself when I left and I had no cavities and I really did feel like a <laughs> A young child, like celebrating that I had brushed my teeth well. <laughs> <laughs> but my but my point is like that we, I mean, that's just a, like a funny one. But I mean, we carry yeah. a lot of these we things carry. around with us. And it wasn't actually, and, and it's funny because he actually asked me and started to explore, like, why? Why don't you like the dentist? Did you ever have bad experiences and everything? And I was like, no, no, not really. It's just, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> and, and, and the way that I refer to these are, you know, we experience either big T traumas or little T traumas. Mm-hmm. And the little T traumas are things like this, right? Where we may have had an experience, like for me personally, the dentist, yes, it's a funny example, but it's an example nonetheless, is as a young child, I didn't like to be told that I had cavities because it, it didn't feel good. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. you didn't brush your teeth well enough. And I'm a, I am a recovering people pleasing perfectionist, which I totally own. And that was very, it's very triggering for me to go to the dentist because it, I fall back into an old story. So now when I go to the dentist, I try to look at it as this is just a great way to, you know, have my teeth cleaned and they're going to feel fresh after this rather than, oh no, this means that I'm not good enough at something. Right. And it's just really bringing to the awareness what's happening and recognizing, yes, it was a small T trauma, but one nonetheless, and we carry it with us. So how can we look at it differently uh, at our current age, rather than looking through the eyes of the young child, how do I now look at it as an adult? Yeah. And I mean, it's a great place to finish, actually, because I love what you just brought up about the the big T traumas and the, and the little T traumas. And because I think sometimes people feel that this that maybe doing all this, uh, you know, self-reflection and stuff is a little indulgent because maybe you haven't had a big T trauma. Right. So therefore you think, oh, well, you know, this is over the top for me. But you've had plenty of little T traumas probably over the years and they are impacting you in, in a cumulative way that you're probably not recognizing. Absolutely. And just because something's not a big T trauma doesn't make it less important to manage or to deal with and to be able to move and grow through, right? It's not about judging it. It's just how can I grow through whatever I have been experiencing or have experienced in the past? 
Yeah. And what are they doing to me? What are those little T's doing to me in terms of tripping me up? Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they may be tripping you up throughout the day without you even even noticing them, which mm -hmm. gets back to the whole point of doing some self-discovery work. Yes, exactly. How are they tripping me up? How are they making me maybe show up smaller than I would normally show up if I were able to release them? Ah, I love that. Show up smaller. That's it. Excellent. What a great place to finish. Listen, uh, Kamini, this has been fantastic. All of Kamini's information is going to be below this uh, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Well, I am Kamini Wood. I am based in North Carolina. I am the mom to five, but in my professional life, I am a professional certified coach working with individuals on truly helping them see their unique gifts and why that is so important for them to embrace, own, and allow people to see it, not dim their light. That's me in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> Excellent. Don't dim your light. Love it. All right. Listen, thanks again, Kamini. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.